know, this day has been set aside to honor our mothers. And in spite of all the commercialization that goes on with holidays, we can take whatever holiday you want and they'll try and figure out a way to make money on it. Um, but even with all that going on, it's a worthy cause to stop and honor and remember mothers especially deserving mothers. How many of you know not all mothers are deserving? But, uh, but we are blessed to have many deserving mothers, and they should be honored. Motherhood, while it may be easy to get into, is difficult to accomplish in a manner worthy of honor. And so when we find it, we need to praise it, and we need to lift it up. Another reason to stop and reflect on this honorable role is that there are many correlations between mothers that deserve honor and the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we find an example of this here in 2 Samuel chapter 21. We find here a mother whose two sons got caught up in the politics of a changing administration uh, with this new king, David. David had just become king and was taking revenge on anyone connected to Saul, the previous king. And this mother displayed reasons to honor mothers even today. And I want to point out a few of them. First of all, if you look at verse 10, you'll see that we should honor mothers for their tenacious love. In verse 10 of chapter 21, it says, Now Rizpah, this mother, the daughter of Ea, uh, took sackcloth and spread it for herself on the rock from the beginning of harvest until the late rains poured on them from heaven. And she did not allow the birds of the air to rest on them by day, nor the beasts of the field by night. So I need you to get the picture here. Here's this mother whose sons were being hung, whose sons were being killed by this new administration. And while this was going on, her love for her sons had her out there day and night, not just for a couple of days, but between harvest and the late rains. That, that was, we're talking about at least weeks. And uh, she stood there and she was, she was clearly tenacious in her love for her sons. She wasn't going to let the birds come and mess with them. She wasn't going to let the animals come and, and mess with her son's body. Even after their death, she stood there and she, uh, in sackcloth, remained with her sons. Now, in, in this chapter, we find uh, this obscure story about this mother, Rispa, uh, who had two illegitimate sons from Saul. She was a concubine of Saul and uh, had these two sons. And when David became, uh, became king, uh, the Gibeonites uh, needed to, um, Saul had done wrong to the Gibeonites. And so there was this action against the Gibeonites that David was trying to correct. So David goes to the Gibeonites and says, oh, what do you want me to do to make things right? And the Gibeonites say, well, give us seven guys from Saul's family and uh, we'll call it even. So they go and they, they grab in seven guys. Well, David, you remember David and Jonathan loved each other. So Jonathan wasn't going to be one of the seven. He skipped Jonathan's family and Jonathan's son. And he went, though, to Rispa and her two sons and five other sons uh, of Saul and, uh, and gave them to the Gibeonites who hung them and treated them badly. David had them hung on these public gallows as a display for everybody to see. And here's Rispa staying there tenaciously demonstrating this great love for her sons. A mother who wouldn't leave her sons even after they died. Now, I don't know about you, but um, to me, that's a picture of love. 
And granted that this is a, a, a general rule about mothers, you know, I found that mothers are more dogged and tenacious in their, in their tenacity to demonstrate love. Uh, when you go to a hospital, for example, and, and visit a family, uh, uh, what I've found is that, is that mothers will stick in there a lot longer than fathers will. That's a general rule now. I'm not, you know, there are certainly exceptions to that. But, uh, but, but mothers have this tenacity to stick it out, uh, even in adverse situations. When children are doing wrong, when children aren't behaving themselves, when they're out there doing their own thing, uh, when they're not uh, being the, the people that, that parents want them to be, uh, fathers may become impatient. Fathers may be the ones that want to, you know, get them out real quick, but mothers tend to, to have this tenacity to be there for their family. And when David heard about the tenacity of this mother's love for her sons, uh, it changed his whole administration, and he decided that, that he was going to give them a proper burial, and he took them down, and he, he gave them a proper burial. Now, we can all remember times when mothers demonstrated that kind of love. Uh, we can all remember uh, times when, when that kind of love that endured through the issues and foolishness that many of us have gotten ourselves into uh, over time. And I say that we need to honor those moms who have loved us through all the ups and downs of life. Is there a witness in the house? I don't know about you, I, sometimes I think maybe I'm the only one, because I had my day too. <laughs> Amen. And, and mothers stick with it with their love. And, and I guess what I want to say today is that that kind of mother's love is a picture of the love that Jesus has for us. It should remind us of, of how much Jesus loved us through all of our issues, through all of our ups and downs, through all of our foolishness, through all of our sin, through all of our rebellion. Uh, God's love never let go of us. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. And we should honor not only our mothers today, but as we honor our mothers, it should draw our minds and our eyes to Jesus so we worship him. Amen? Amen? And so honor mothers because of their tenacious love. There's something else I want you to, to walk away from this story remembering, and that is that uh, we need to honor mothers for dependable support. Dependable support. You know, when Rispa held her vigil over her two sons, she had no idea what was going to be accomplished by that. All she knew was that she was going to be there and she was going to support her sons no matter what. She was going to support those boys no matter what mess they got into, regardless of what the outcome was going to be. Whether or not they had gotten mixed up in the crimes against the king, uh, got mixed up with the wrong administration, uh, if they were identified with the old regime and found themselves in trouble with the new king, uh, you know, she was going to support them whether they turned out to be Republican, Democrat, or whatever other party they were going to support. Amen. She was going to support those boys no matter what job they took. She was going to support those, those boys no matter what uh, they got themselves into, what uh, occupation they found themselves in. She was going to support them. And that's the way that it is with moms. Mothers just have this natural tendency to support their children no matter what. You know, again, I don't know about you, but all of us know times when we followed our old thinking rather than dedicating ourselves to walking with God. Uh, we can identify with, with following the old worldly regime that we were born into and, and, and got ourselves in trouble with. But when trouble comes and friends run away and flee, 
Just ask the prodigal son. You know, when, when trouble comes and, and all the money's gone and, and everything, everybody runs and nobody sticks around. But when others pull their support, guess who's always there to help? Mom is always there. And mothers tend to stay there and will see you through whatever the issues and whatever the problems might be. Is there a witness in the house? I thank God for mothers who support and provide that kind of support through all the ups and downs. You know, there's a story recently in CNN that, uh, that, dem that it talked about this 25-year-old who, um, because of the lifestyle that he chose, wound up with AIDS and lost a lot of weight and was, you know, looking sickly and was on his last leg and um, you know the father disowned him didn't want to have anything to do with him wouldn't go visit him but guess who stuck with him all the way to the end mother was always there for him and that's the kind of support that uh, that that mothers provide uh, even when no one else does and the reporter asked the young man how he deals with the pain of not only the physical condition that he was in but how he dealt with the rejection of his whole family and his answer was that he simply closes his eyes and imagines being in his mother's arms because he knows that his mother would always support him you know that kind of endless support from a mother is also a picture of the dependable support that Jesus offers us just as we are without one plea but that his blood was shed for us no matter what condition you find yourself in, no matter how far away you might have wandered, no matter where you find yourself in life, God's love is tenacious and God's support is dependable and you can walk in that love and you can count on that love. It's always going to be there. God's love is, is dependable and his support is always there no matter what you go through. And so uh, I, I want you to remember as you honor mothers today that mothers are really a picture that should lift our minds up beyond where we are today in our own family circumstances as we are witness to our, our mothers and their tenacious love and their dependable support. It should take our minds to Jesus. It's another opportunity to remember that he loves us and he cares for us. He died for us. He laid down his life for us and we can serve him but there's something else I want you to see and that is that we need to honor mothers for they define where home is huh you know I can imagine that even these boys were dying that they felt at home as they were dying they felt at home in the presence of their mother uh, there was a, uh, if you ever talked to somebody who grew, anybody here grew up in the military? We have any military kids? Oh, you got, you got a couple military kids. Yeah, Errol is looking around. Put your hand up. <laughs> well, you know, when you talk to military families, you know, especially when they move around from place to place and, and, you, and so you live in this base and that base and town to town, where do you call home? You know, where's home? A lot of times military kids, uh, they, you know, you ask them, well, where are you from? Well, I'm from all over the place, you know, and uh, where is home? And, and, and one of the common answers refers to where their mother is. Because wherever mom is, that's home. And, uh, and that, that is the case with so many uh, people, and that's their experience. The fact of the matter is that home is not about a nice house. Uh, it's, it's more about where people are that love each other and support each other. It, it's more often than not, it's mom who is at the center of that love. She's the cement 
of those relationships, the energy behind the love and support that's found at home. And so uh, that there's a, a rhyme that says, wherever I wander, wherever I roam, wherever mother is, there is my home. And again, we honor mothers because in a very real way, they are the pictures to remind us that this world is not our home. We have a heavenly family. Amen. We have a heavenly father. We've got, uh, some of us have human family that's, that's there in heaven and glory too. And, uh, and so we have a, another home, another family, and where our heavenly father is, where our spiritual family is, there is home. Uh, and so we're just sojourners down here. We're just here for a little while. And when we think about the central role that mothers play in defining where home is for us down here, it should remind us that, that the central role that our Heavenly Father and our Heavenly Family play in defining where home is for us for eternity. This is not our home. Amen? Amen? And since this is not our home, let's not get so caught up in all the materialism, in all the rat race, in all the stuff that keeps our eyes down here rather than up there. Uh, and, and, and you know, many of us, are so caught up in what's going on down here that we lose sight of what's going on in glory. And we get distracted. And as a matter of fact, our, our love and our attention leaves heaven and is consumed by what's going on down here. But we are ambassadors away from home. We are sojourners just passing through. If you were to drop the, the little bit of time that we spend 80 years maybe or whatever the Lord gives us to spend down here on this earth. If you were to drop that into eternity, it would just be, you wouldn't even be able to find it with a microscope. It's just a little bit of time that we have down here. And you know, the older I get, the more I'm reminded that boy, time passes so quick. I got another birthday coming up in a couple of weeks. And I'm saying, man, you know, I was just 10 years old. <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> but time just like flies by. And, uh, and, and you wonder where it all goes. But, but in, the, in the scope of eternity, it's just a moment in time that we're down here. So let's not get too caught up with what's going on down here. Sure, we have to make ends meet. Sure, you got to pay next month's rent. Sure, uh, you know, bills have to get taken care of. But, but in the process of doing all that, let's remember this is not our home. Our hope is not based on being down here. And then I need you to lastly look at verse 14, because in verse 14, uh, I want you to honor mothers that channel God's blessing to the family. Take a look at verse 14. At the very end of this passage that was read, it says, and he went through Oh, I'm on verse chapter 20, verse 14 of chapter 21. They buried the bones of Saul and Jonathan, his son, in the country of Benjamin in Zela, in the tomb of Kish, his father. So they performed all that the king commanded. And after that, God heeded the prayer for the land. Now, don't run past that too quickly. After this mother's demonstration of tenacious love and dependable support, it caught the eye of the king so that the king did what he was supposed to do and he gave them a proper burial. And, and by him doing what he was supposed to do, it opened the door for God's blessings on the land. Mothers can become a channel 
of God's blessing to their families, to their communities, and especially to their, their children in particular. And so I want to challenge mothers that, 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 that are channels of God's blessing to the family. It's amazing how powerful the demonstration of love can be. Love convicts sinners. Love challenges our motives. Love softens the hard ground of our hearts. Love encourages us to do the right thing. And so often, rather than choosing the avenue of love to, to affect change in others, we take a different avenue and we take an avenue of hatred and, and, and pushing somebody aside and rejection and walking away from people because of their sin. When, when it is the love of God, as we share the love of God with people, it affects change change in their lives but you know some of us as Christians we can get pretty self-righteous amen and we will we will eliminate you from our list in a minute and don't look like a sinner because we won't have anything to do with you but that's not how you affect change in your family or in the community. The fact of the matter is that we need to demonstrate love. We need to share the love of God. It is that we should be disciples who what? Love God and share his love with the world. That's what we should be about. To people who disagree with us, to people who, who don't see life the way we see it, to people whose lifestyle is different than ours, to people who reject the word of God, to people who, who have nothing to do with us, we don't run away from them. We share God's love with the world. Amen? And this mother, in her simple demonstration of love for her sons, had an effect on the whole nation of Israel. And God blessed the nation as a result of the impact of her love on King David. The action that he took, it opened up the door of God answering the prayers of the nation. And so I want to challenge us that all of us individually, as we think about our own lives, sometimes we think, well, I'm just one person. What can I do? Well, you can share God's love with people around you and you'll never know those ripples. It's like throwing a, a little stone in the water and the ripples go out much further than you could ever reach and have an impact. And as we honor mothers today, Let's see the love of God demonstrated uh, in, a, in a way that, that causes us to, de to dedicate our lives to be the channels of God's love to our families, to our church, and to our communities. And as we share God's love, we become those channels to our church. And, and as we have uh, our church affected by our love, it, it will affect our communities. And as we affect our communities, it affects the county and as we affect the county it affects the state and we can affect the nation the ripples of Montco Bible Fellowship can go way beyond Main Street in Lansdale if all of us take seriously that as we recognize the love of our mothers and have that point us to Jesus and allow the love of God to be shed abroad in our hearts so all of us, fathers, brothers, sisters, children, all of us share God's love with the world. Amen? Amen. I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes. And I wonder if uh, this simple mother named Rispa A mother that we don't hear a whole lot about, but a mother that demonstrated that kind of tenacious love.
for her family and how it had such an effect on the whole nation of Israel. If that love would challenge you today. Maybe the Spirit of God is speaking to you about maybe there's a relationship that's broken in your life that you need that kind of tenacious love to go beyond what seems to be broken and share God's love. Maybe there's somebody that you just need to forgive. Maybe there's, there's that, that need for you to reach across to somebody that, that you'd rather not spend time with. Whatever the Lord is bringing to your mind, ask him to help you. And as the Lord is speaking to you, I just want to pray with you. As you ask God for help, I want to pray with you and ask God to help you as well. And just an upraised hand, say, Pastor Tony, just pray for me. Amen. Yes, I see those hands. Yes. Just put it up, put it back down. There's some areas, there's some relationships, there's some situations where I just need to be tenacious in my love. Not give up. Just hang in there and demonstrate the love of God. Any others? I want to pray for you. Just slip a hand up. I'll include you in prayer. And I need to also, because you never know, you know, there might be somebody here outside of Christ. Somebody who's not sure if they die today that they're on their way to heaven. And you want to know for sure that your sins are forgiven. I want to pray for you. Is there one like that? Slip a hand up and I'll pray for you. Amen. Then, Marco, let's stand on our feet. Let's go to prayer. And gracious Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. Lord, you have extended tenacious and dependable love and support to us. We thank you for the mothers in our midst who, who are reflectors of that love. Lord, help us to be consistent. Help us to share the love of God. Help us to be channels of blessing, of God's blessing to the people around us. Lord, for each one that raised their hand, you know exactly what they stand in need of. You understand what they need even better than they do. Lord, meet that need. Answer that prayer. Heal that relationship. Go over that bridge. And we'll give you thanks. We'll give you all the credit, all the praise. It all belongs to you. In Jesus' name, amen.